What's up guys, Midnight Strike here, and you were watching another classic review. So, basically I haven't done one of these in a very long time, partially due to the fact that I couldn't find a copy of Castlevania for under 40 bucks. And, you know what, I decided, okay, fine, I'll just review Crash Bandicoot in the meantime. So, you were watching the review of 1996's Crash Bandicoot, which is going to also serve as the penultimate episode of the Season 2 classic reviews. So the next one will be the season finale and I pro I'll probably just wait a while before posting any more. So basically to get into it, this is the game that single-handedly shaped the legacy of the PlayStation 1 early on. Back before, you know, back after all the sprite-based games were released for it and it really wasn't utilizing the true potential of the PlayStation 1. And this was after its competitor, the N64, came out with Super Mario 64 and all those other different games that I may review in the future. So, basically with this game, uh, Crash Bandicoot came out in 1996 with its bright color scheme, its really amazing um, backdrop for characters as well as boss battles, and kind of really unique camera perspectives as well. This is the first game that I've seen that switches from an overhead perspective, an overhead behind the back perspective, to a side-scrolling game for platforming. So, and every time they do this, the camera moves at just the right angle where you can actually see everything that you're doing and everywhere that you're supposed to go without any just waiting for the camera. So, throughout the entirety of the behind the back perspectives, you're just kind of walking in a straight path or, you know, turning. And it's a platforming game, but it makes it feel like it's more of like an open world. It's kind of like Jack and Daxter, which is also by Naughty Dog, where it just... It, you're going in a linear fashion, but it makes it feel like it's an open world. Jack and Daxter, of course, being the extreme example, as that is basically an open world, but then again, I digress. This game just makes it makes you feel like you're in a bigger world than it actually is for all the levels. So the level design is pretty great. I really like the switching between the side-scrolling action and the over the overhead behind the back as well as the chase missions where you're basically running from something as fast as you can there's a lot of other missions where crash is riding on a bolt or a uh, warthog and you're supposed to jump over different things and different obstacles and tribesmen who are trying to kill you or um knock you off your warthog if you want to be children friendly or whatever because you know you can't die in video games nobody ever dies in nintendo or early sony games but then again I digress once more. So, to get into it, the level design, the level progression is just perfect. The pacing is great. I really like this game. I really actually rated it, um, like, fifth place for top PlayStation 1 games. It was a top 20 list. I don't remember what exactly, what exact place I gave it, but I remember it was high up there as well. I actually like the second one a bit better because of the variation in level design as well as just you know, entering the level, this it's the first one that brought in warp rooms, so you could save your game easily and you didn't have to traverse on this map thing, which I should add is kind of tedious when you get down to it. You, you p press pause, you press select to quit the game, and then you're back at the main menu, but then when you load your game, there's some, for some reason there's a password system, even though it loads right where you are. So I don't know why you needed a password system. I think it's an alternative method of saving if you don't have a memory card, which, you know, that would come in handy, except I don't really know what it could be used for if you're using the memory card already. So it doesn't really make much sense to have that in there. So, you know, it's interesting. First game that I've seen that has a um, saving system as well as a password system. But then again, you know, this is Crash Bandicoot we're talking about here and Naughty Dog, so they just want to be prepared. So overall, the boss battles, the character designs, and the unique and uh, awesome color scheme with the environmental backdrop really make this game and push it forward to be one of the more innovative titles of the PlayStation 1 and really push the console to its limits in terms of actual um, replayability as well as just the graphical integrity of it. It looks really good for a PlayStation 1 game. So. With that, I'm probably going to rate this game like 8.5 out of 10 because the saving system is really weird and the uh, the map screen is just kind of hard to, hard to traverse, especially in those really tight corners where it's making you like go to the next level to the next stage and you're it's really hard to tell like which level is which from a distance because it doesn't actually tell you the name of it until you're on that platform. 
if that makes sense. But the game is great. It's got a great environment, a great color scheme, and makes you feel like you're in an open world. It's really good. It's a really good game. Go check it out. One of the more innovative titles of the PlayStation 1. So with that, 8.5 out of 10. This has been Night Strike 3625. Keep calm and rock on. We'll